All right, folks, we're back here on the Stampede, and I'm your host, Andrew Morris, and uh, we have joining with us now the, the leader of our uh, technology education department here for the CTE Center, the legendary Mr. Kevin Law. <laughs> Thanks for being here with us today, man. Glad to be here. He has a lot of exciting things going on in this department, and we're going to get to all of those. But, but first, tell everybody likes to know a little bit about the teacher and who we're talking <laughs> to. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I'll start off by saying, please don't hold it against me. I was born and raised in Giles County, <laughs> and... Uh, Grew up, went to college at New River Community, and I started working in the industry. I was a drafter for many years at Moog, and then I decided to make the transition into education. I worked in Tazewell County for nine years as a drafting teacher, and now I'm here in Floyd. This is my second year as the technology education teacher. That's awesome. So where do you live at, Mr. Law? Are in you Christiansburg. Christiansburg, mm -hmm. okay. So just a little commute here, but yeah. we're very thankful to have you. So. So tell all the folks, um, what do you offer in that technology department? What, all, what classes do you have for the kids? All right. Uh, we offer a lot. Uh, the basis of the program is it's around technical drawing. So we offer a technical drawing class, an engineering drawing class, and an architectural drawing class. And in addition to that, we offer video media technology, uh, robotics, and robotics too, which we just added this year. That is great. So you're teaching them obviously it's got to be spread out through the whole school year mm -hmm. that's a lot of classes yes. and you're handling all of those right i'm trying to that's awesome <laughs> that is really cool so is you know we're going to get more into it here but so if they're with the drawing and stuff that's leading them into engineering is that yes what we're after um with technical drawing and engineering drawing as well as architecture that's the foundations for all of engineering and that's the way i try to approach it uh, it's not a math class per right. se there is math involved but we try to we try to get the kids involved, try to get them thinking a little bit different, kind of, we, like uh, our superintendent always says, we want to develop those critical thinking skills. So they might not be an expert in a certain particular area, but we try to, we try to get them to start thinking, just start getting creative, thinking outside the box. It's awesome. So when you get to the, the robotics, it's very interesting to me, but uh, so is there prerequisites for that or can you go straight into that or how's that they can go work? straight into robotics um i this is a new course for my, me as well as the students and the way we are approaching it is it's a foundation course we learn what is a robot what is, how does a program work with the robot what can we make these motors do so um it's a brand new course we're just excited about it and we got some cool little technology to go along with it how many uh, students do you have in that class? Is it uh, catching on with the kids? It or? is. Um, currently, I have in robotics one, around 16, 17 students. Wow, that's great. And so in the, we're going to take a little bit of tour here, but you know, you have the, the CNC, what we're going to look at, mm -hmm. and the drawing of that. What class does that fall into? Well, that kind of works with my engineering classes, okay. uh, the, techno the um, technical drawing and the engineering drawing. Um, the way it works is we could take all the drawings that we make, and that's fun to make the drawings, but what can you do with them after you create them? And that's right. where the CNC machine, the 3D printing, and all that stuff comes into play. That is great. Sounds like fun. Um, this is a CNC wood carver. We got this this year, and this gives uh, our students the ability to take the drawings that they create in class and be able to actually get something other than a piece of paper that they can look at that they created. Um, this is an example of something that the, we're working on. It's a work in progress, as you can see. But the way it works is we take the drawing, put it in the computer, do a little fine adjustment, and this router will move along this board and create basically whatever we want to create. How long does it take to just to do one of those? This took about two hours. Yeah, it was. It just depends on the how detailed I wanted, the size sure. of bits and all that stuff. But no, it just takes about two hours to make something like this. That's awesome. So show us how you set it up. How we go here? Uh, the first step and is you got to lock down the piece of wood because see the router will be putting some pressure on it don't want to slide all over the place but so we just take the piece of wood line it up with the holes in the board and just screw it down until it's tight and we just you can adjust it and once it's on there you put a two or three around it and it locks down pretty pretty good mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you could do so many things. Yeah. I'd be like, put your shoes in the closet. Yeah. 
Actually, what's great about this is you don't have to have a CAD draw to do it. Huh. You, it takes a, a DXF file, or not DXF, uh, image files. If you have a picture of something you want, you can plug it into the machine and it'll cut. Wow. So, all right. Anything. I, Anything. Can, I can make Sarah a timeout spot. Huh? A little sign there. <laughs> okay. So, you get it locked down, you put two or three around it, and as long as this board does not move, you're in good shape. And once you plug in the machine, the computer runs everything else, and we just have our router. And once you turn it on, it just starts cutting. Hmm. Now, is that just like a standard? I mean, that is, is that a, just a standard Dewalt router. That is a router? standard Dewalt router. That is awesome. I mean, you know, if something went wrong down the road, then you could, mm -hmm. you know, get back to it and fix it. And yeah, you know, that's cool. So, what's moving it? Is that we there's motors on the side. And it's on the pulley system, has it up here, so it just goes all over the machine. And it's being controlled by the, the computer. Once you have your picture or logo on the screen, uh, you can control all the details about what size bit, what size wood, and you can actually simulate how long it's going to take to cut. And this is a simple one, has a small bit, but it's going to take this one, well, 14 hours. But if you change the, this is a 30 second bit, we make it a little bit bigger. Simulate. Takes 54 minutes. Wow. Big change. So the change is based on the size of the bit? The bit and the detail that it wants to be put into it. Um, I have done some very small bits and yes, it does take a while. So I try to minimize that as much as possible. But um, 16th of an inch can pretty much cut anything you want. Now, will the, the type of wood make a difference too? In yes, the time? yes. I've actually broke several bits. Um, oak is just a hard wood, sure. and once I've had to figure out the settings. But once you figure that out, it wasn't too bad. Right. Slow everything down and be patient. So where do you where are you getting your supplies or your wood from? Just different. Luckily, our shop across the hall, our ag department, has an abundance of wood that um, I've been working with her, and we're just trying to get all get little things put together sure. here and there. That's awesome. And they had it donate to them too. So. Right. That's great. How are the kids liking this machine? Are they enjoying this? They love it. Um, once we get everything going though, it gets pretty loud in the room and they like to, uh, well, look through the window. Right. <laughs> you can't, it's hard to hear yourself think sometimes. <laughs> and you're telling it what size bit? Yeah, I'm telling it what size bit and roughly the size of the wood. And I'll go down to the bottom and kind of get a Simple idea of how it's going to cut. And this is about a 30 minute cut, but it's fairly simple. So, what we do, turn on the machine. And what this allows to do is the kids start to think instead of just 2D, like on paper, we can start thinking 3D um, because we now have a depth option with the machine. Yeah, um, what's going on is we have to have like a zero point where it starts with and it'll also finish at that spot, but you just got to tell it where to go. And I like to pick the front corner. And... What I'm doing now is... It's called a Z-probe. And now I'm ready to start making this work. So just ask me questions to make sure everything is okay. Confirmed a bit. Wants me to probe my machine. So confirm position. Clip is attached. Just makes an electrical connection. And now it starts to probe. Once it's touched, the machine now knows exactly where the surface of the wood is, and we can start. To, and we can start to cut. It's asking for my 
z location, x, y, and spindle zone. So how do you know which bit size to use? Does it, <laughs> does it go to the drawing specifically? Sometimes I go that route. Um, sometimes my preview shows me what it would look like with certain bits. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. He's like, that's it, and I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I was approached by the uh, Kazam Misfits. Uh, they're associated with the Shriners, and they would they wanted a large member of the year plaque built, and they provided the wood and all the hardware that goes along with it. They just wanted their emblem and all the the cuts to be made into the wood. So it took a little bit of trial and error. We made a couple test, test cuts, but uh, this was put together. I mean, it's, we lined up everything was done on AutoCAD, our dra drafting software, and it imports straight to the computer and we were able to uh, cut this out fairly easy. How long did that one take to cut? This took about six hours. Wow. Technical draw. Yeah. What do we have here? This is a 3D printer. Uh, this gives the students the ability when they create their 3D models on the CAD software, we can actually create them in real life by plugging the models into the 3D printer and having it created. Um, and you said this was the technical drawing class? Yes, technical drawing. I can get a simple print going. And it takes a few minutes to warm up. Um, with these printers, we have some capabilities. Um, this is a special part that goes along with the printer, but it allows us to do something a little bit different. Um, we are able to take composite materials um, and create 3D models out of stuff other than plastic. Um, this right here is a wood 3D printed object, and this is a bronze. 3D printed object. So as long as it's a composite material, it's part plastic, part bronze, uh, we're able to create basically anything we want to with these machines. And what's interesting is there actually is a weight difference. So there's enough copper in here that it'll eventually oxidize and start turning color. Okay, so I got some dummy questions for you. So <laughs> where is that material at in this within this printer, or is it? This right here is the uh, material. And let me. Basically, it looks like a weed eater straw. <laughs> and you just, what it does, it runs through the straw and it goes down into a little part here in the bottom, it's called the print head, and it just melts it to a point and the computer tells it where to go. Wow. So how long did it take to, to print one of these guys? Oh, this, uh, about two hours. Wow. Per one. So they make a spool like that with wood? Yeah, uh, actually, this is bronze right here. But it's got hmm. the wood in it? It has a little bit of wood. It has a little bit of whatever the material that it's supposed to be. Just It's a composite okay. part, plastic part, copper, wood, or whatever. And actually, I'll show you this. There actually is a huge weight difference. Yeah, there is. Wow. 
And this is the bronze one? That's the bronze. Hmm. It's very interesting. So how big of an, an item you can make? <laughs> how big? Yeah. Uh, well, last week I was I asked to print a... Last week I was asked to print a crown for the snow court. Or wow. whatever the... I don't remember what it was called, but they wanted a crown that they could put on their head. So eight inch diameter and about four or five. I mean, it filled up the machine. Hmm. So it's pretty large. How long did that one take to do? That one took about 16 hours. Wow. So. And how expensive is a spool of that stuff? This spool, roughly 45 bucks. So this isn't too bad. And how much of that material did it take to, you, to make the crown? Very little. Um, it's actually, they're pretty efficient machines. Um, the way the machine is designed is on the spools, it's divided into thirds and we're able to gauge how much material goes through it. But really, a spool can last me months, usually. Cool. Just depending on how much the kids want to print. Do the kids enjoy this? Oh, sure yeah. Sure they do. Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> and this is also associated with my technical drawing and engineering class. Cool. Oh, yeah. Well, check out what I've been doing. Maybe we'll be right. It will be close. Oh, yeah. uh, they are they created a program to play a game uh, the goal is to start in the spot pick a box and put it back in the bigger box in the back of the room and these robots have two capabilities one to work with a remote control and the other to uh, be programmed and this currently is completely programmed. There's no uh, intervention from the programmer whatsoever. Except when I kick it. Except when he kicks but, it. <laughs> there so, is a little bit of, I guess, give as far as the way it's structurally made. And so it runs a little bit different every time. So every now and then it doesn't hurt to intervene a little bit. <laughs> but we have got them all before. So yeah, how does it know where how to pick that block up? How does it see it? Oh, it don't. I just program it for every measurement, every time the motor rotates. So I did some ratios and figured out like distance to motor rotation and uh, worked it out, did the math. You see how it squats the mill a little bit, and that's just the way it's made. It doesn't run perfect each time. Yeah. How long did it take you to build this guy? To build it? Yeah. Um, I'd say. Yeah. It wasn't very long. How long does the programming take? <laughs> a while? Depends on who you ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we might have a clean sweep this time. Yeah. That's still wobbling a little bit. Yeah. There it is. Perfect. It's awesome. But yeah, you can load several programs on here. But uh, I know he was running his on my robot too, so he's got his on there. Each robot. Yeah. Yeah, every robot's identical, and the idea is if anybody can pick up any robot and put a program on it and see how it works. Each individual robot has the program of the people using it. So the program is what's different. Right. And then uh, there's another thing with like the degrees. It can sense how many degrees it turns and stuff. But different. So 90 degrees on one robot could be 304 in the program, but then on the yeah. one like his, it could be up to 500 for a 90 degree angle. It depends on each robot. Yeah. Well, basically, when I went through and did the math on all of it, figured it all out, and then just tweaked stuff because for it has to be a bit that doesn't hurt them, so. You just go through there and then uh, once you get it going, then go back and tweak things step by step until you get it out. And like every week we have a different project that we do or a different task we gotta perform. So what's the other one's program too? What else you got going? Uh, nothing right now, but previously we've had ops we've had like a obstacle kind of capture the flag, I guess. You grab them, take them back to your side and uh, across the room had to get blocks and take them back and drop them in boxes and and we found that running a robot over 30 feet in the room 
um, you'd never have a straight line. Right. So it, it's trial and error, but um, the fact that they could take a, I mean, it's like Tinker Toys, and they put them together and try to they can make the motors, make the robot move, and they have programming experience now that they can um, apply it in many different ways. The I mean, code that we use is basically C++, which is common uh, coding for any machine. Most of the machines nowadays use C++, and once you learn that, a lot of job opportunities open up. That's great. Yeah. So, like, what types of machines? Just like in factories, and different industrial, things, right. um, a lot of a lot of software programming. So, like driving tech, self-driving technology, that uses a lot of C++. Mostly, if you get certified in C++, you can get hired on the spot, pretty much. Is that something you can guys can do here or mm -hmm. through this class? Well, that's awesome. All this does, it's C++. That's pretty much it. We give them an introduction into program. Right. We try to keep it as simple as possible, but there's still so could you program the driver's ed car to drive around for everybody? <laughs> Give me a lot of hoses and a lot of computer parts. I'm probably good. Right. Take a lot of time. <laughs> I need to get my car running first. <laughs> okay. That's cool.